Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Extracellular Vesicle Club. This is an event of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles. So I'd like to introduce now uh, Tomer Cooks and uh, Neta Regevrudsky, who are going to be co-moderating. The main, the main uh, dish for today is the two speakers, uh, just to give you a taste of what we do here in Israel. Uh, our, main, our first one would be uh, Professor Danny Offen from Tel Aviv University, and the second one would be Professor Karmit Levy, also from Tel Aviv University. Karmit is going to uh, talk about melanoma and melanosomes, and Danny is a master of uh, neurodegenerative uh, diseases. So, um, Danny, why won't you uh, share your screen, and we will be able to start. Okay, so without further ado, uh, Professor Daniel Offen from the Tel Aviv University would present the intranasal delivery of uh, MSC-derived extracellular vesicles for the treatment of neurological diseases. Danny, please, the stage is yours. First, I'd like to thank the organizer for the invitation, and uh, Thomas, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'd like to introduce you to our studies uh, with uh, extracellular vesicles, or the more popular name, exosome, and let's start with uh, autism. Autism spectrum disorder, as defined by the DSM-5, is a neurodevelopment disorder associated with uh, symptoms that include the deficit in social communication, social interaction, and repeated behavior or activities. In 2021, the CDC reported that about one in 44 children in the USA is diagnosed, diagnosed with uh, an autism spectrum disorder, which is a huge number. For many years, uh, we are studying in our lab the potential of the chemo stem cells, MSCs, for the treatment of uh, neurological disorders, including autism. MSCs are adult uh, multipotent progenitor derived from various adult tissue and are capable of uh, self renewal in vitro. MSCs were safely used in autologous transmutation and exhibit no toxicity following a transmutation into rodent on or a uh, these cells are very popular for cell therapy uh, all over the world, with more than 1,000 reported studies in clinical trials globe. MSCs are used in virus indication, and many of uh, these studies are in neurology. Uh, they are isolated from virus tissue and transplanted, transplanted directly or uh, after some uh, manipulation to the CNS. The beneficial effect can be explained by endogenesis in a specific area in the brain, immunomodulation and reduced inflammation, clearance of the aggregates such as the amyloids, and the no protection against oxidative stress or toxins. To study the possible effect of MSCs in autism, we use the BTBR model. BDBR are uh, inbred strain of mice that demonstrate phenotype that was resemble the autistic endophenotype. Specifically, we see reduction in social interaction and communication, a deficit increase in repeated behavior. We've shown that intracranial injection of bone or derived vesicular stem cells improved most of these uh, symptoms three weeks later. Now I'm speaking about cells now. BTBR mice injected with their cells show improve in repeated behavior with significant reduction in the time they spend in self-grooming or digging. The cells treatment even reduce the cognitive rigidity, another classical phenotype of autism seen in these uh, inbred mice, and of course in children. The mice also show improvement in communication as indicated by increase in vocalization re record by uh, ultrasonic uh, microphone. So are the chemical stem cells uh, themselves responsible for the therapeutic effect? And the beneficial effect could be detected even six months after one single injection of the chemical stem cells. But we know that was the chemo stem cells do not graft or differentiate at, phenotype, at our pathological site. So this observation leads us to the assumption that the effect is not only by the cells themselves, rather by extracellular vesicles secreted in the lesion area that penetrate into the neurons. 
Therefore, for the next set of experiment, we perform, we perform with the EV, the exosome derived from the chemo stem cell. We ask whether exosome might provide the same protection or, or generation. So specifically, we look for uh, the EV, if the EV exosome penetrates the blood-brain barrier, if they can migrate to the inflammatory lesion, and most importantly, can they induce regeneration or nerve protection? We use the mesenchymal stem cells from the human adipose tissue and isolate the exosome from the uh, calcium fluid. The exosome were characterized by unique devices that uh, define their number, size, shape, or uh, biomarkers. And we also analyze the full protein and the microRNA profile. To test the blood brain barrier penetration of the, of the MCs, we stain the cells with red floss enzyme and fold them uh, after intranasal or intravenous administration. We found that in both routes of delivery, the cell's penetration was very low. In contrast, red label exosome three hours after intranasal administration, and of course perfusion, we can, we can see a significant uh, penetration, but we don't see it in, in after inter intravenous or very long. 24 hours after intranasal administration, most of the exosomes evacuate from the brain. However, in mice model for stroke, we found that the exosome migrate to the lesion or more precisely to the inflammatory area, probably via a gradient of a ligand or hemokines, as we'll see later. CT imaging of the exosome labeled this gold nanoparticle indicate that the EV find their way like GPS or ways to the lesion. They accumulate after a few hours and stay up to 72 hours as we can see in the red line. While in the exosome, in the healthy brain, they disappear after 24 hours. Here we can see in this movie, a CT imaging of a gold label exosome following intranasal administration, 24 hours after in, uh, induction of the stroke using the endotelin one, by intracranial in, uh, uh, injection, and the endotelin one was injected only to one hemisphere. Now back to our uh, autism model. Exosome labeled with green dye migrate mainly to the uh, prefrontal cortex and the cerebellum. As compared, exosome labeled with red dye and treated with uh, pertussis toxin, which uh, blocks hemokine re uh, receptors, they lost their ability to migrate to a neuropathological area, which indicate that the exosome can sense the inflammation by this uh, CT scan. Moreover, using a triplet staining, we found the, uh, the uh, we followed the exosome in the tissue and found that the most of the exosome accumulated in the neurons. Here we can see triplet. Uh, a labeling with uh, DAPI and uh, neuro N for neurons and PK26 for the, uh, for the exosome. If you look for the behavioral study uh, with the exosome uh, after intranasal delivery, we use the ultrasonic microphone and evaluate the, uh, the vocal communication. In mice, uh, the female is very quiet while the male is uh, much more communicative. So now, we can see in the, in the top panel that the control CBC, uh, C57 black, male, black mice, uh, we can see in the, and hear the vocalization. BTBR, as we see before, uh, they are almost quiet. However, in mice treated with one billion exosomes, administered internally, uh, we can hear and see a significant improvement. And this uh, picture was, or this uh, test was the uh, four weeks uh, after the uh, delivery of the exosome. We also check the uh, social interaction between the males. The black mouse is autistic mouse, so-called, and the white mouse is healthy. We observed marked improvement in the social interaction few weeks after exosome treatment. Missing parents, our PhD student, identify uh, maternal behavior in the autistic mice. 
they almost ignore, ignore the babies for several hours in the cage. And in contrast, pregnant mice treated with exosome show totally different maternal behavior. And the mother took care of their babies and carried them into the small house. Using the, the latency uh, to collect the parts showed that the treatment due to the our mother behaved very similar to normal mother. We repeat our study in genetic mouse model of uh, autism. Only very few percent of the autistic cases are a result of a known mutation. But one mutation is responsible for about 1% of the cases. Shang 3 stabilized the glutamate receptor in the synapse. Mice mutated in uh, Shang 3 demonstrated most of the autistic endophenotype that we described before. In collaboration, in collaboration with uh, Evan Elliott from Berlin University, we used the uh, marble burning test. Uh, to measure the repetitive and anxiety-related behavior in chunk 3 mutated mice. The exosome treatment reduced this behavior, as you can see in the left. We again see increase in social interaction and reduction in the grooming and the digging, the repeated behavior. So to sum up the mechanisms of exosome, we and others demonstrated that exosome inhibit virus pathologic process such as inflammation and induced protection and regeneration. The fact that the exosome carry the uh, goodies of the mesenchymal stem cell makes them excellent candidates for transplant. On the one hand, intranasal administration of uh, MSCs exosome reduce inflammation, uh, apoptosis, uh, protein regression, and demyelination, and protect uh, against stroke uh, or ischemia. On the other hand, the exosome induced neurogenesis, uh, angiogenesis, and uh, uh, no protection. One of the biggest challenges in neuroscience is spinal cord injury. Together with Professor Shalmit Levenberg from Technion, we decided to check whether exosome given through the nose will reach the lesion uh, in the spinal cord. And as you can see in the CT image, imaging, 24 hours later, the labeled exosome derived from human adipocyte concentrated in the lesion. However, we couldn't see any significant clinical improvement using exosome alone. Therefore, we look to inhibit the protein that known as a regeneration inhibitor, namely P10. P10 increase after brain and spinal trauma. Reduction of its expression in lesion known to be a benefit following the spinal cord injury. Therefore, we loaded modified sRNA against the P10 into the exosome in order to knock down the pitin protein in the lesion. Here we can see the threat 56 days after full transaction of the spinal cord. We observed the drop tail and through the mirror from the below, you can see the paralyzed hind legs. In parallel, we did another group of threads with exosome loaded with modified sRNA against the pitin. The loaded exosome were administered intranasally two hours after the lesion. 56 days later, we can see that the rats use the four legs. The tail is up, and actually the movie is in slow motion, so actually the rats can run. The motor index of the exosome treated rats you can see uh, very severe control groups. Uh, so only the green line, uh, we can see the improvement when the red receive the full treatment, namely exosome with the sRNA. Diffused MRI analysis of the spinal cord showed the full transaction on the top right panel and the recovery after exosome treatment on the low panel on the right. A histology studies demonstrated that the Treatment enhances axonal growth and uh, vascularization. Uh, we see less uh, micro microgliosis and uh, astrogliosis uh, increase in electrophysiological function. To sum up, in several models for brain and spinal cord trauma and neurogenitive diseases, such as brain injury, Alzheimer, Parkinson, ALS, exosome migrates to the relevant area and demonstrate benefit in preclinical and in few clinical studies. 
The main question is whether this pre-clinical pre successful studies will be translated to approved veterinary patients. We know that the anatomy and the size of the rodent olfactory bulb is very different. Preliminary clinical results indicate that the intranasal administration of MSC exome is safe, but uh, further research, of course, is uh, needed to prove the benefit in the virus uh, indication. I would like to thank my colleagues, Professor Shlomit Levenberg, uh, uh, Professor Achela Provozer from Barilan, and uh, Adrian uh, Elliot, and I'd like to thank my wonderful group and excellent students that are busy to improve and develop new ways to use this exosome <coughs> for neurological indication. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Danny. Fantastic talk. Uh, uh, several uh, questions deposited. I'm going to read uh, uh, aloud several of them. And if we see that it takes too long, then we'll move uh, further. And you can contact Danny later on. So uh, first question, BTVR mice model, is it a spontaneous condition or induced? No, BTVR are inbred, inbred mice. It's, it's, it's a line of, of mice. We don't know exactly we, what are the genes that are involved in the, the pathology. And the Shang-3, of course, is, uh, is congenic. And there are several, uh, several models with Shang, some mutations, some knockout. OK. Uh, what are the sizes uh, of the aerosol particles coming from the atomizer further? Do you see the EVs ended up in the lungs as well? I'm assuming this is where you showed the, the, the EVs labeled in red. Yes. Uh, okay, the size are about 100 or 150 nanometers. And uh, when we label it with uh, gold nanoparticles, uh, we can do CT for whole body. And uh, of course, you can see air in the lungs as well. Yes. Actually, the, the, okay. the percentage of the exosome in the brain is not so high. It's about uh, four four percent. But uh, without, uh, I mean, if in the cells, it's about uh, zero, almost zero. So right. uh, it, it's, en it's right. enough to do the, the effect. So the enrichment is enough. Yes. Um, so for the spinal cord, only one EV shot. That was the 56 days what we saw that only after one treatment. Yes, actually it's a four, a four treatment, but only on the first week. Okay, and uh, did you ever try to use the labeled liposome control as opposed to the, the EVs? And um, nanoparticles, you mean? Not not EVs? L lipo liposome, yes, no, like synthetic. No. no. And how do you perform uh, your EV loading with the siRNA? Uh, and the sRNA is uh, modified, and uh, we use the several transfection agent to, to load the modified RNA in the eggs. Okay. And any idea what mediates the EV targeting? Yes. You mean the uh, net Yes, the, the inflammation so, side, the, the cytokine. Um, so uh, both the, in the inflammation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Nissan Peretz is also in the OEN that he did in a very nice experiment. He shaved the exosome with proteas and showed that the shaved exosome cannot uh, migrate and they have no effect. Okay, we have uh, uh, a long list of questions. Let's try another like three. Um, are there any uh, future study plans to address how the EVs are targeting damaged CNS tissue? Again, please. So, so future what, what, plan. What? So. So, plan, so yes. the, tar the, the targeting yes. of the damaged tissue, how is it like the, the mechanism, how it, it goes yeah. there? Do you yeah. study yeah. that? Yeah, the future is to treat patients, actually. <laughs> uh, now, there are two ways, two, two general ways. One is the uh, exosome as is, and uh, we are already in the process of a clinical study in the autism. And uh, for spinal cord, uh, we have a company, Norxon, that uh, started a few months ago, and they like to treat patients with spinal cord injury with loaded exosome. And uh, another question here is, um, 
how, how do you think the EVs are targeting the neurons in the autism model since there's no outright damage, right? So you didn't inflict any damage and then they do target the, the neurons for some reason. Good question. Actually, since we don't know the exact mechanism of autism, it's hard to say, but we know that there are some inflammation in autism. We know there are a reduction in the neurogenesis. So there are some damage. Although we don't, we don't know exactly what the damage, but interestingly, we see that the exosome go to specific area like the prefrontal cortex, which of course is relevant also in autism. So there is something there, although we cannot point to the specific damage. All right, and this was, I think, asked before. So one last question, have you, uh, have you tried tried another cell type derived EVs. So like NSCs, EVs or neural exosomes, something not from NSCs. Uh, yes, uh, we did it from uh, muscles and neuronal stem cells and they didn't work like the mosaicomal stem cells. The mosaicomal stem cells are the best. Or the champions. All right, yes. thank you again for this uh, very, very nice talk. Uh, Professor Offen.